VIU Online presents GEC 101 English Composition, Week 7 Theoretical Lecture, Academic and Professional Writing. This lecture is presented by Dr. Laura Hills, Professor of English at Virginia International University. A key to academic writing is to make sure you are in control of the assignment rather than letting the assignment control you. Begin by making sure you understand the assignment and if you aren't sure, ask your instructor to clarify. What does it mean to understand the assignment? Well, it actually means many things. You need to know what is the purpose of the assignment. Who is the audience? Certainly the instructor will be one member of your audience. But there are others. If so, who are they? Your classmates, scholars, people of a particular group, the world in general? What does the assignment ask of you? Look for key terms in the assignment such as summarize, explain, evaluate, interpret, illustrate, and define. Do you need clarification of any terms? If so, ask your instructor. What do you need to know or find out to complete the assignment? What does your instructor expect of your writing? How will you use sources, both textual and visual? How should you organize and develop the assignment? What is the expected length and format? And finally, can you find a model of an effective response to a similar assignment? That's extremely helpful. I can tell you that when I was embarking on my own doctoral dissertation, one of the first things I did is I went to my university library and took dissertations off the shelf and looked at them. That helped me tremendously in understanding what it was that I was about to do. What does a dissertation even look like? I had never seen one before. So knowing what a good model that you're shooting for would help you as you head into the assignment. You also need to learn the routines, practices, and ways of knowing in your field. And it's not always the same from field to field. If you're writing about Edgar Allan Poe, who is a wonderful American writer for a literature course, the routines and practices and ways of knowing may be very different than if you're writing about Sir Isaac Newton for a physics class or about Beethoven for a music history class. So becoming familiar not just with good writing, but good writing in your field, in your discipline, is very important. And then to follow your disciplinary style. Ask, what's the overall tone of papers in your discipline? Are they scholarly, argumentative, descriptive? How are papers typically titled in your discipline? Are titles usually descriptive? Are they persuasive? Are they long? Are they short? Are visuals typically used in your discipline? And if so, how? What documentation style is used in your discipline? Now, at VIU Online, all research papers are written in APA style. But depending upon your discipline, you may find research papers written in other styles, such as Chicago or MLA. Do writers in your discipline use the first person? Do they speak from I, I think? Or do they have another way? Do they call themselves the investigator or the researcher? Or do writers use third person formats? Are sentences in your discipline typically long and complex? Or are they simple and direct? And to what extent do writers in your discipline strive for distance and objectivity? Here's a tip. Review papers and articles in your discipline for ideas and inspiration 
become a better consumer of texts. Look at them as models and ask whether there's anything you can learn beyond the content of the paper, but about the writing, about the style, and about the process. What is acceptable and persuasive evidence in your discipline? For instance, is textual-based textual research accepted? Well, if you're in history or literature, probably yes. Is quantitative research the norm? Qualitative? Or are mixed methods used in the research? Do, do researchers combine qualitative and quantitative research? Does your field use primary and secondary sources as a review? Primary is when the author is speaking in the first person about their own work or presenting work as original. Secondary is when someone else, presumably another scholar, is speaking about that author's work. Are both accepted? How are quotations integrated into the text in your discipline? Do papers and articles typically begin with an abstract? I'm going to share with you an abstract for an article I published in a journal called the, Medical, the Journal of Medical Practice Management. This is my abstract. This appears before my article. We've all experienced gossiping, missed deadlines, someone taking credit for another's work, and little white lies. These and other breaches of trust are commonplace. However, they do more damage in the medical practice than many practice managers realize. This article argues that medical practice employees need to trust their managers, patients, doctors, one another, and even the security of their jobs so they are able to focus on their daily tasks and perform well. It defines trust as both a logical and emotional act and describes common breaches of workplace trust. It defines three characteristics of high trust organizations and illustrates through examples how practice managers can demonstrate their trustworthiness through their actions, not only through their words. This article also offers seven steps for rebuilding trust that has been breached. It offers readers two instruments, a survey tool practice managers can use to assess the trust in their practices, and a self-quiz practice managers can take to assess their own trustworthiness. Finally, this article offers research about the impact of trust on the bottom line and 10 truths about trust that medical practice managers can share with their employees. As you can see, once you've read this abstract, you know exactly what this paper that I wrote argues and what features it has, what it includes. That's the hallmark of a good abstract. By reading that, the reader should know exactly what the paper contains. Are you going to have to write one? In this class, your final research paper will require you to write an abstract. It's a skill that's very useful to you, as you probably will have to do so in other classes. How are texts in your discipline organized? By sections, chapters, do they have a way of using subheads? You must be scrupulous in presenting data to make sure that others can replicate research and test claims. This is the hallmark of academic writing. We're going to dig a little more deeply into what it means to be scrupulous in the way you present data. We're going to look at what is trustworthiness. All research is concerned with producing valid and reliable knowledge that others can trust, and there's a great deal that goes into that. One idea is that your research must be credible. Now, credibility means that investigators are observing and measuring what they think they're observing and measuring. Another term you'll see in the area of trustworthiness is triangulation. Triangulation can enhance credibility. It is the use of multiple investigators, multiple sources of data, or multiple methods to confirm emerging findings. In other words, you ensure that your research is good by looking at it more than one way or through more than one method. That's triangulation. 
Transferability is concerned with the extent to which a project's findings can be applied to other contexts, populations, or situations. And reliability in research design is based on the assumption that there is a single reality and that studying it repeatedly will yield the same results. You'll see these terms, and as you can see, credibility, reliability, they have just slightly different meanings. Clarifying the researcher's biases is a good way to ensure that findings are credible. So revealing that you maybe have a bias is an important point in placing yourself in the research. For example, I did a research study of women in leadership in higher education, and I revealed to the reader that I myself had been a woman in leadership in higher education because there was a potential bias on my part for having been in the same shoes as my research subjects. Now let's look at what makes writing so important. And there are so many reasons. Let's go through them. First, writing is central regardless of your academic discipline. There's no escaping it. Anybody in any discipline who's doing research is going to write. Writing also plays a major role in the life of every working professional. And with the use of computers and word processing, we have changed the way we work and everybody is a writer. Writing is an essential job skill. There's just no escaping it. Writing is the primary basis upon which your work, your learning, and your intellect will be judged in college, in the workplace, and in the community. Writing requires that you anticipate your reader's needs and your ability to do so demonstrates your intellectual flexibility and maturity. When you write well, people think more highly of you. Writing also increases your critical thinking capacity. Writing and thinking are inextricably linked. And when you write well, it demonstrates your critical thinking. Writing out your ideas permits you to evaluate the adequacy of your argument. I know myself that sometimes I think I have something in my head and when I start to write it out, I realize it's not as strong as I thought it was. It's missing some pieces and I can poke holes in the argument. So it helps me clarify my own thinking and see the adequacy and inadequacy of it. Writing stimulates you to extend a line of thought beyond your first impressions or gut responses. It makes you dig more deeply. Writing helps you understand how truth is established in a given discipline. Learning how your discipline writes and then participating in that conversation through your own writing will help you understand it from the inside. Writing equips you with the communication and thinking skills you need to participate effectively in the world. And writing helps you refine your ideas when you give others feedback. It's going to be a very useful skill to you throughout your life. And in this course and many others, writing your feedback is a component of the course. Writing fosters your ability to explain a complex position to readers and even to yourself. Writing promotes your ability to pose worthwhile questions Formulating that all-important research question is a critical thinking skill that will help you ask better questions elsewhere. Writing is portable and permanent and makes your thinking visible. It can outlast you. And finally, writing expresses who you are as a person. This concludes the theoretical lecture for week 7.